Hi everyone, this is Legend TV Show. I'm Fantasila, and you are watching Evan Gitzberg Legend TV featuring with the Greek. Hi everyone, this is Legend TV Show. I'm Fantasila, and you are watching Evan Gitzberg Legend TV featuring with the Greek band in all the land. I said in all the land. Thank you. Edwin Vasquez Musica. Je suis Fantasila et je vous présente l'émission de M. Evan Gixberg avec les musiciens les dangereux des USA. Il dit bien des USA. Les 50 États des États-Unis. Edwin Vasquez Musica. Après eux, c'est la mort. Il n'y a plus rien après eux encore. Un seulement, un bâtiment, un chez nous, ni émission, Evan Gixberg a émissionné, en a qu'à donner la la nous nous minuer, donc là, donner la la les nids me font nous yer, minuer Edwin Vasquez, musique en a qu'à groupe nous nous yer. Thank you, merci, Aniche. That was a song in itself to me. Casa y oficina con perfume de cocina abrió un lugar allá en la esquina un negocio de comida latina considerada una mujer muy fina con la sencillez de campesina la mamá rosa haciendo historia con la hoy de amor criolla, mamá rosa, doña que cosa, empezó con nada y acabó famosa, mamá rosa. en la vecina y su famosa ya en la esquina con una sopa de gallina y una salud de maravilla dejando su sazón por la avenida bailando con sabor en cada esquina la mamá rosa haciendo historia con una olla de amor y olla, la mamá rosa, doña que cosa, empezó con nada y acabó famosa, mamá rosa, la mamá rosa.
Mamá Rosa empezó con A y acabó famosa Mamá Rosa haciendo historia con una boya de amor criolla Tiene que dormir para soñar Mamá Rosa, oye, qué cosa, oye, qué cosa Empezó con A y acabó famosa Mamá Rosa Mamá Rosa Mamá Rosa Mamá Rosa Empezó con A y acabó famosa Haciendo historia con una boya Como tú y yo Wish I was there to give you a hold, to give you care. I wish I was there. Misfortune fell upon you. Fortune 
that fell upon you lay the blues. You knew you were leaving. Why so soon? I imagine you looking down, hearing my song, feeling proud, laying a wind there upon a cloud, dressed in pink, without a doubt. Yes, Evan Ginsberg TV, bringing you music from the heart and soul, bringing you an eclectic world. How long we go one line to ourselves? Pretending we don't care that nothing could be done That it's everyone for themselves Call me crazy, but I believe We can make a change No more wars, lies Together we can break the chain Walking around with so much bottled up inside. Passing each other in a daily disguise. We can run, we can hide behind the wall of lies. Truth will find us. We can hide. In Night, but in the morning light, truth will find us. Have you ever taken notice to the pain, the fear in our eyes? Look close, listen hard, you can almost hear a cry. So much done with every passing moment. So much said without a single word spoken. A messenger once said, Truth is found in the heart. But before kingdoms change, hearts must change, we all must do a part. We can run, we can hide behind the wall of lies. The truth will find us. We can hide in the night, but in the morning light, the truth will find us. History has proven we're all one and the same. One heart, mind, let love lead the way. Only love can lead the way. Only love. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Let me hear you pray. Pray with that guitar, brother. Pray. Yeah. We looked at each other with the curiosity of a child. Didn't take too long before the skeptic came along with a pessimistic smile, clouding the mind with judgments, fears, and doubts. Believe me, I can understand precautions taken, but there's something about the child I won't live without. Believe. Don't be afraid Believe Remember Why you were made We can run, we can hide Behind the wall of lies But truth will find us We can hide Find us Hide in the night But in the morning light Truth will find us There it goes. Don't look too far. Beating away in your heart. It's been there from the start. From the start. This song, uh, composed by James Gover. Just go ahead. And Best locks in the Penn We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's Best Locksmith and Hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. 
You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. When your cable's on the fritz, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When you pay too much for cable, you throw things. When you throw things, people think you have anger issues. When people think you have anger issues, your schedule clears up. When your schedule clears up, you grow a scraggly beard. When you grow a scraggly beard, you start taking in stray animals. And when you start taking in stray animals, you can't stop taking in stray animals. Stop taking in stray animals. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Uh, hmm. uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. This is Beth. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. <laughs> For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Locky? That's right, Alan. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, What? What is the story with you? I'm Who comedian Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Marvin J Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. 
For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Motorcycle Body Spray will make you feel so powerful to blow your mind right in front of your face. Goodbye. Oh, no! Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power? Yeah, I do. Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. B -b 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 -power. Right, Evan Ginsberg back with Legends TV, and you just heard the greatest band in all the land, Edwin Vasquez, yeah. Musica. Uh, this is our house band. These are not guest musicians. They're going to be on all of our shows, and we are right back here at MadhouseTV.com on June 22nd, followed by July 20th. And on July 20th, we will celebrate, I shouldn't say celebrate, we will honor the memory of Bruce Lee, the 40th anniversary of Bruce Lee's death. Believe it or not, on July 20th, 2013, he died in 1973, and we will bring Cooley High, who's a martial artist, as well as, we are hoping, the international superstar Oliver Shawn, who is well-known throughout Europe, Asia, he's from Goa, amazing, amazing artist coming to Evan Ginsberg's Legends TV. But before I go any further, I'd like to introduce my co-host. He's an educator, he's a writer, he is a radio personality in his own right. He is Steve Ludwig. How are you today? Thank you. Oh, oh, me. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. Listen, it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, I'll tell you, it's, it's an honor to be your co-host. Your Legends Radio Show is, a, as the title says, legendary, with an opening like we had, and with Mr. White here. I can't, you have an incredible guest list. Coming over here, I was, Nico and I drove in together, and yeah. he had me in stitches. So. All right. So let's, uh, let's do Nico right. Nico is uh, an outstanding up-and-coming comedian. I tell people all the time, hey. he's going to be the next Chris Rock, the next Eddie Murphy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Absolutely. I, I, booked, I booked Nico at Gizzy's Cafe. Uh, sure did. He did a 50-minute set when he was 18 years old, I believe. Yep. 18 years old, which is amazing. Uh, thank you, man. And uh, tell us a little about yourself, Nico. Um, tell you about me. What is there about me that people would care about? Well, 20 years old, I've been doing stand-up comedy for six years now. I started when I was 14 in 2007, just doing it in school as a hobby to maintain popularity. So after about a year of doing it in school, my teacher was like, you should go try some open mics. I did an open mic here in the city, and I'm not going to lie to you, I bombed like I'd never bombed before. Like, my best joke was a joke about my cousin taking a dump in my bathroom and not flushing the toilet. And when all my <laughs> other jokes failed, I'm like, they ain't laughing at those, but this one is going to kill. When I hit that <laughs> joke, the best I got was a, ha! <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, because I failed that one time, I kept doing it, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? I, c I can't do anything else. Impossible. Mm -hmm. I can't work a regular day job. I'm a stand-up comedian from now to the day I die. And uh, usually young men will say, you know, I want to play in the NBA or, you know, I want to be a rapper. Well, what, what made you want to be a stand-up comedian of all things? Well, first of all, I suck at basketball. There like, you go. I'm, <laughs> people see me, I'm, well, how you say, tall for no reason, you know what I'm saying? And my height, dudes be like, yeah, if I was your height, I'd dunk everywhere. <laughs> Shut up. No, you wouldn't. But um, I chose to be a comedian because I was always the funny kid in school, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. And I don't have this great reason for starting. I started out of jealousy. In the first day of high school, I met a kid named Rodney. You know what I'm saying? Rodney was funnier than I was conversationally. Mm -hmm. And I had the choice of, on day one in high school, okay, either I lose the identity that I always had, you know what I'm saying, 
or I carve out my own lane for myself. And it was coincidence that a teacher of mine asked, hey, does anyone have a talent that they'd like to share? Something in me said, go tell jokes. Went and told jokes, it worked, and here we are six years later. And what's it like standing in a club, one in the morning, patiently waiting for that five minutes of stage time? It must be rough. Oh, it's rough. It's yeah. rough, especially when your mother loves you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to go home talking about, yeah, you know, I'm waiting here at a comedy club around a bunch of grown men and some kind of, you know, scandalous women. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's all worth it, man. All, the, all that stuff, waiting late nights to get on stage, you know what I mean? Like running out my bus pass before, like after school. It was all worth it, <laughs> yeah. especially to look back at things now. You know what I'm saying? I make a little money doing stand-up. I'm able to afford my bills. So, you know, by the grace of God, things are okay. In the old days, a comic would get his break on The Tonight Show. Uh, th by the next morning, they'd be a star. It's not yeah. like that anymore. There's a thousand channels of cable. What's the game plan today for a young comedian? To get on Legends TV. <laughs> that is the game go. plan for a young comedian. You want to make it, you get on Legends TV. But besides that, um, you know, you have to carve out, carve out your own lane for yourself. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? That's what everyone tells you. Like, you need to be on YouTube. You need to be on social media. You need to be everywhere. So you do as many things as you can, and you keep your stand-up sharp. That way, when people see you, if they like you, they'll come out, they'll support you, and you'll hopefully be good. You know what I mean? What do you consider some of the highlights thus far? You've worked with some major, major people. Yeah, no, some of the highlights thus far, I would have to say, like, I'm a real, like, sappy kind of dude, so real, like, emotional things get to me. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that was real big for me was my first booked spot at a club called Stand Up New York, because I remember the first time I walked into that club, it was to do an open mic, I was 15, and the guy name was Greg. Greg was taking our money for the open mic or whatever, and I said, hey, man, I've been coming here for, like, a month or whatever. How long do you think before I'll be able to work, work the club? And he looked at me, he said, I'll give you seven years. Well, <laughs> by year three, I did my first book spot there. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And yeah. that, that, that meant a lot because that's my favorite club in the city because mm -hmm. they really seen me grow. And to get into that club as a spot comedian, I went through all the steps. I started out just doing the open mics there, from open mics to check spots, which is where they put you up when they pass out the bills. You're basically playing cleanup. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Then I would do guest spots, an unpaid spot, but it's not checks either. So you get seven minutes of uninhibited time. Mm -hmm. And now to be doing paid spots there is probably one of the greatest feelings. Another one was when um, Donnell Rollins, who is like a mentor to me, if you don't know him, he's Ashley Larry from The Chappelle Show. He okay. gave me an uh, opportunity to host for him at Caroline's. And that felt good because, like, you know, when the person you admire, shows that they appreciate your work. You know, it feels good. You're 20 years old, and you've, you've paid your dues. I mean, you're really, you didn't just step into it. I mean, you've got to be respected by your fellow comedians who have been around a while. They see that you've, you didn't just step in, and here I am. I mean, you've been going for, going on seven years now, you said? It's, 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 it's going to be seven years yeah. next year. And, um, you know, I, I, you never know who respects you. You know what I'm saying? I still find, like, when people respect me, it's kind of weird a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It could be because I'm so young that I'll bet, yeah, I don't I'm really sure know how to take it. So when I get them, like, you know, thank you. I probably don't deserve it. You know what I mean? But it's, 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 it's one of those things that I can never get used to that people actually care. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Somebody stopped me on the train and was like, you're that comedian, right? I'm like, yeah. Like, can I get your autograph? That blew my mind. Yeah. I said, can you wait? Can you get me? I pulled out my best pen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're going to get it, you're going to get yeah. it. And in the best script you've ever seen. Like and a I John Hancock deal, script. right? You better believe yeah. it. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's got to be a great feeling, boy. It's, 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 it's beyond great. Mm -hmm. it, it truly is. And I'm happy that I'm able to do what I do. You know what I'm saying? By the grace of God, hopefully I can do it on a bigger stage one day. I'm sure it's going to happen. I'm sure when you go to parties, people do the old, so you're a comedian, make me laugh. Tell me a joke, you're yeah. a comedian, tell me a joke, make yeah. me laugh. Get out of my face, yeah. okay? I work when I'm at work. Until then, yeah. I, I like being a regular dude, I miss that, you know what I'm saying? And coming from where I'm from, like, I don't get to see a lot of my friends anymore, because a lot of them are locked up, you know what I'm saying? Then you got some others that are, um, you know, just not around. Mm -hmm. So when I, whenever I could just be a person and not a comedian, I... I revel in that time, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm so busy. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to ask you to make us laugh. <laughs> Maybe uh -oh. do a minute or two of stand-up for us? A minute or two of stand-up for you. Okay, I could try uh -oh. that. Let's see. Uh, all right, let's do it. Literally standing up. 
Oh, you know, literally standing up. Make sure. <coughs> and let's go. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen watching this, before I talk about anything else, let me talk about me because I do have my own problems. For example, I have a celebrity lookalike here in America, but I look like a very unsuccessful version of that celebrity. People see my face and they're like, oh, my God. The dude from the Allstate commercial is doing terrible <laughs> these days. But it could work out for me because if I make some money and gain some muscle, I'll be able to grab a woman and be like, are you in good hands? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the big thing right now in America that we're fighting over is gun control. What do we do about guns? More control, less control. Now, in my mind, I'm for more control. But if you're for less gun control, that's fine. Do you. I just don't like your commercials. One commercial had this white guy in Nashville, no hair, no teeth, with an AK-47 as big as I am, talking about, I use this for hunting. I use this to kill duck and deer. I'm like, my dude, the only time you need an AK-47 for duck and deer is if the duck and deer are shooting back at you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then they made a commercial with the president's daughters in it. They were like, ladies and gentlemen, the United States of America, our president, Barack Obama, says he doesn't want armed security in your children's schools. However, the president's daughters get to walk around with armed security each and every single day. Ask yourselves, are the president's daughters more important than your children? Yes, they are. 110%. I thought about it. Let's say I had a son, and me and my son are standing next to the president and his two daughters. If somebody threw a brick, I would abandon my son and jump <laughs> in front of the president's two daughters. Yeah. Why? Because if I save my son, I'm just a dad. If I save the president's kids, I'm an American hero. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> and then it could work out for my son, because when he gets older, he can guilt the president's daughters and having sex with them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like, hey, my dad saved your face. You should put it here. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's about it. Nico White. Yay. Yeah. All right. And, All folks, right. we will be right back after this with Melissa Coates, top, top <laughs> wrestler, champion bodybuilder. Work. One more time, Nico White. Thank All you. Right. Legend TV. Yay. Yeah. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What, the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Come comedian on. Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Marvin J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Brooklyn's best lock, Smith & Hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, Fire rated from a half hour to two hours. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best, Locksmith and Hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Most Vice Body Spray will make you feel so powerful to blow your mind right in front of your face. Goodbye. Oh, no! Goodbye, dear Kyle. 
Try it out. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the bounce dryer bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer and I never have to remember. Oh! Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. Old Spice Body Spray can change a regular smelling man into a man who smells like power. Now, how is this? Ah! Wow, you know what? I actually do feel more power. Potato chips! It's me. Uh, hmm. uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. <laughs> For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. All right, we're back with Legends TV. A poet, a ballet dancer, and a pro wrestler walk into a bar. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. We have a top 10 female bodybuilder, a former WWE. Uh, she appeared on Backlash in uh, 2005 with the WWE major pay-per-view. Melissa Coates. Kevin, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to see you here. I hope there's <laughs> enough space for me. May I help you with that, Melissa? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Always a pleasure to be here. There you go. <laughs> so much. I'm so happy to be here on Evan's debut there. show of Legends TV. There you go, Melissa Coates. And uh, we have Arlene NG, who's a dancer and a uh, singer, and she has her own CD. Tell us briefly about your CD. Hi, Evan. I just uh, want to thank you, first of all, for inviting me on the show, and thank Ev Edwin Vasquez for inviting me to be his dancer for the day. And I released my album, Canciones Intensas, in November 2012, and I'm very excited to share it with you guys today. There you go. And we have uh, John Winnell, who's a noted poet. Tell us a little about yourself, John. Um, well, I work for the public schools, and um, I've been a poet for a while, and try to turn the darkness into beauty. So I try to capture that into my work. I've been working with I guess influenced by school children for many years and just by my surroundings of being in New York City and everything else. And it's a pleasure for me to kind of be able to be on the show with you. I thank you. And for our final segment in the show, you're going to do a poem or two with Edwin Vasquez. So we're looking Ooh. forward to that. Thank you. And uh, Melissa, tell us about you, you've had such a wild life. You know, you've been around the world. You've wrestled in India. Tell us some of the highlights. 
Well, first of all, I was the McKenna Junior Girls Tennis Champion. I did tennis. I lifted weights to be a powerful tennis player. I won bench press competitions. I turned that into professional bodybuilding, where I've done the Olympia twice. Here's a couple, a couple of my medals. Oh, that's my like Olympia. a that's right. It's <laughs> like a workout right there. Work for all yeah. these things, and the Olympia is like the Super Bowl or the WrestleMania, if you want to say that of women's bodybuilding. So I competed uh, you know, very successfully in bodybuilding. I was all over magazines. I was very lucky to be in a lot of magazine spreads. I was in Muscle and Fitness, Flex Magazine, Muscle Mag. Here's one of my Muscle Mag covers. Wow. Yeah, wow. so I mean, I've been very lucky. I was a, I was a top ranked bodybuilder and um, a, a top fitness model. And then I got into professional wrestling. I've been a developmental diva as they call them. I've, uh, I've, uh, I did Backlash um, 2005 for WWE. I've, I've done some work with their television, Ohio Valley Wrestling and Deep South. And I've wrestled in Puerto Rico. I've wrestled in you know, third world country, Nepal, uh, Kathmandu in front of 20,000 fans. Wow. It, was, it was crazy. I felt like Hulk Hogan, like honestly, yeah. like I really <laughs> did. And it, it, it was, you know, there, it, it's been fun. I've done a lot of different things in my life. And accomplished a, a lot of different things and you know things keep keep moving along I've you know of course I've done some film work so um, a story about Ian we did that um, did ultimate death match too which had Dan Severin in it Kevin Nash Brutus Beefcake you know it had some major wrestlers in it and uh, then of course we have your film coming out the stage is an altar that's right yes and I'm very excited for that too so I can't wait for that to come out and Evan thinks I should be a, a big film star, so I'm not. I absolutely I'm not going to argue with your. You know, <laughs> in Hollywood, in Hollywood, you you have people. It's like a dime a dozen. You have a unique look. I mean, you would stand out. I think you'd be perfect for action films. I think you'd be perfect for comedy. You've done comedy. You have a great personality, yeah, right. over the top, and um, I think that's the avenue to pursue because. You know, I was associate producer on The Wrestler. Believe me, I understand the wrestling business. I've been around it a long mm -hmm. time. And, you know, the human body, after so many bumps, you know, people reach a certain point where it, it's just tough. It's it very is. Tough. It's, yeah. it, it is. It's very demanding. Uh, so. I was on the road for a while. And you'd be on the road for four days a week, and you'd hardly get any sleep. You're not getting your food in. You know, so the, the real challenge for me was keeping a bodybuilder's physique while you know the challenges of not getting enough sleep and, and not eating enough like most of the girls on tv right now who were originally fitness models um they actually do not seem to they're i can tell they're having problems maintaining the kind of leanness and muscularity the girls who actually didn't start as fitness models seem to be leaner and better shaped than some of the the fitness girls so i know what they're going uh, the girls who weren't fitness competitors are in better shape than the girls who were fitness competitors to start with and then got into wrestling so um, it, it, it's difficult, you know, definitely I would love to get more into films, you know, I, I think I have more of a, a personality that could work with that as well, like yeah. I'm, I have a science degree, I went to school, I'm intellectual and kind of creatively minded, I think, on top of being physically minded, and you know, a lot of wrestling stars go into to films anyway, so I would, I would definitely love to do that, so we'll see what happens. So we're going to do a wrestling poetry segment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe after yeah. the break. Yeah. <laughs> after the show. You know, I fire him every day. <laughs> there you go. So You're his muse. Cat, yeah. cat, cat juggling. And, and, and I've had to block him off Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you too? <laughs> <laughs> so, Melissa, uh, this popped into my head. Um, are men intimidated by a woman who theoretically could kick their ass? I would you say know. so. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had very, uh, I seem to have, like for example, the other day some guy on Facebook went and flipped out on me and I, I posted it just because it was so rude. Like, because he was asking me out, wanted my phone number. I'm, I'm not going to give a stranger my phone number. Well, it's number. good to and give you your number publicly on Facebook. Yeah, well, Great idea. I didn't even know Safe. the guy. But because yeah. like I was busy answering some booking messages and didn't get back to him right away when he said that, he should be my husband. He like flipped out on me and you know, then he was like rude. So I said, I'm gonna unfriend you because like this is like ridiculous. And then he's like, You unfriend me, I'll block your racist ass or some or sorry, I didn't mean to say, but it just it just got really crazy and, and nuts. It just flipped from being like, you know, admiring to being like crazy. But, um, but let's say let's say you walked into a club and a guy who doesn't have a six pack of abs, you know, out of shape, but a nice guy Great guy. Would you be interested, or would this? Oh yeah, I've de you know there, you can't really 
look at the people I've dated and say there's a type. Most uh, most men think I'm going to date like a big bodybuilder type, which of course I have. I've dated a lot of very physically strong men. I've dated some wrestlers. I've dated you know fighters, people like that. But I've also dated just I like individual individuals who are you know they're passionate about what they do. They're usually very very good at what they do. They just kind of think outside the box. Like I like that kind of unique you know, kind of trailblazer sort of personality, I guess you would say. I can relate to it because the things I've done in my life are so very non-typical for women. Like, right. I seem to have managed to choose a very hard course for myself every step of the way. You know, like, female bodybuilding is difficult. You're always having people think they can comment on it. Then it's wrestling. You know, you're a woman doing wrestling. Acting. And yeah. Acting's you know, tough, too? Uh, yeah, acting's tough, but I think so it's you a like little a more acceptable for women to do acting. I, I mean, I've chosen kind of male-dominated sports, right. like, Girls shouldn't be muscular, and here I'm, a, you know, in bodybuilding, and girls shouldn't be wrestling. That's so unfeminine, and I'm, I'm wrestling. So acting would actually be probably the girliest thing I would have done besides fitness modeling. Mm. So. So, so you like a challenge, no doubt. I, I no do, doubt. yeah, yeah. I just, I, I think you, you know, it's good to push yourself every day. If you get bored into a nine to five, I'm just not that sort of personality. Like that, that just wouldn't work for me. I, li I like to have to work hard. I like to challenge myself, and you know, for me, that's what keeps me going. Just trying to do better every day and get stronger, do do better at what I'm doing. There you go. I do some charity work too. I actually did a calendar. I don't know. I'll show it to you actually. For uh, Sandy Relief, wow. I shot it all in, in wow. New York. I have a, a yes. few of them left. I actually shot the last segment of that calendar. John, the, John the poet will give you a hundred bucks for that right now. Okay. <laughs> yes. Where's your wallet? Yes. I actually shot like two days before Sandy hit. I shot like the second segment of this calendar in Central Park. So you know, I, I try to spread things around and do good things for other people at the same time. It just, I, it feels better when you're, you know, entertaining fans or doing things like not like I want to wrestle because I want to be famous and have everyone know my name. I kind of do it more so that people can be entertained or enjoy themselves and. You know, hopefully give back a little bit. It's just, yeah, I just think it makes things more worth doing. I've never been, you know, a self-serving person, which probably looks odd considering I've done bodybuilding and wrestling, and they seem very egoic. But for me, like, they're not. Like, for me, I was always, like, sort of proving a point or doing things people say you can't do or women can't be muscular and be girly at the same time. And, you know, I just, I push the envelope a lot. There you go. But I enjoy doing it. I like and to push the envelope. I like to push John around too. <laughs> <laughs> John likes uh, that, I think. <laughs> I'd, I'd like you all briefly to uh, tell the listeners, the viewers, how they can contact you, uh, social media, everybody, Melissa, okay, mine's, Elaine. Of course, melissacoats.com is my website, and my Twitter is Melissa L. Coates. I had to put my middle initial in there. Okay. Facebook, I have two Facebook accounts for Melissa Coates. And Ali? Um, you can listen to my album on iTunes or cdbaby.com and um, I'm also on YouTube. And John has a book out? Yeah, Poems for Ordinary pe Everyday People. That you can contact me at johnwinnell at yahoo.com. Okay, and you're going to hear one poem from John Winnell right after this quick timeout. Thanks for coming, everybody. Brooklyn's best locks, McKen Hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hours, famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. Uh, hmm. uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. 
You're totally thin. You look very sexy. <laughs> For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. Yes. Rub, it, rub his knee while he's uh, uh. <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen we are back with our final segment it is my honor my privilege to present one of new york's finest poets my buddy john winnell okay thank you evan this poem's called do you ever think of me i was wondering sky blue eyed velvet touch ripples of skin if ever in the ice spiked refuge of midnight or early morning you think of me, this maddened bulk of blood and bones, a broken angel you called, asleep on barbed wire. New York City shakes its dark columns while nobody really sleeps. We catch bandits together, all these hours lost in a breathless dream that captures the unseen, all hidden desires reflected in a crow's tooth. Buenos Aires, an ocean away. I feel your words tickling. Maybe it was the wind pushing away lonely bodies. I search the caverns for light, places where shadows weep, looking for clues, remnants. I taste salt as it billows off the river. Morning clouds argue their weight upon the water. A serum infused with ice and driftwood. I watch birds circle and wonder if you ever think of me. There you go. John Winnell, folks. And uh, that should pretty much do it for Legends TV. Just a quick couple of plugs. Uh, my movie, as the Iron Sheik would say, uh, cameraman, Zoom. This is uh, Teresa Sario, Alive Again, which um, I produced and features Gary Sinise and uh, Lanny Poffo, the genius for you wrestling fans. Lanny Poffo does a very beautiful poem, so the poetry fans in the audience will appreciate that as well. And uh, this is my book, Apartment 4B, like in Brooklyn, the turbulent East Flatbush 60s and 70s, uh, chronicled here, autobiographical short story collection, critically acclaimed. <laughs> this is Hey Cabby, my uh, dad's book. Uh, he drove a cab for 27 years. We call this a zine, fanzine, self-published. And uh, some great, great stories. He picked up Marilyn Monroe, Judy Garland, uh, many of the legends, and uh, chronicled in this short collection of stories. And for you wrestling fans, I know Melissa's here, so we have a lot of wrestling fans. Uh, this is Wrestling Then and Now. This is a 1980s clipping collection, and we have a 1970s clipping collection, and you could go to legendsradio.net where you will find uh, our store and all these uh, items on sale. And I know uh, Steve Ludwig did um, See You in CCU about his open heart surgery. And yes. uh, tell us very briefly about that. Well, you know, I wanted to write a book, so I decided I'd have open heart surgery and write about it. No. Uh -huh. uh, but Good you material. can just go to. <laughs> You can go to ccubook.com, the letter ccubook.com, and all the information is there. And every Thursday, you can hear me live on Fever Keeps It Real. That's feverkeepsitreal.com. That's 6 to 8. It's a wrestling show, pop culture, and they're covering Comic-Con, the Philly Comic-Con, this coming weekend. So go to uh, wizardworld.com, and they're going to cover it live all weekend. So. Thank you very much, Mr. Ginsburg, for that. There you go. And as always, this is an eclectic mix, as we like to say. When you go from wrestling to poetry to ballet to gypsy soul, we pretty much covered all bases. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. As I stated, we will be back June 22nd with much more of Evan Ginsburg's Legends TV, co-hosted by Steve Ludwig. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> yeah. It's a wrap. <laughs>